Hi designers, it's Haley with Silver Moon Design School and today I'm going to show you how to create a Yeti tumbler. We'll be creating 3D shapes using Adobe Illustrator and then taking those into Adobe Dimension. And it really makes for a great presentation for clients, for your school projects, or for your portfolio. So let's get to it. To get started, I have created a new Illustrator file and I've created two layers. The first layer is named reference and that's where I've placed my two reference images because I want to get this lid correct and I can't really see that from this side angle. So I've selected both from their product page and I've put these onto my Illustrator template and locked them so I can't mess with them later. And then I've created an art layer which is where I'm going to create all of my OBJ files. Well, first we're going to start out by just making the shapes in Illustrator and then I'll show you how to use 3D and materials tools to make those realistic. So I'm going to start with this half splice of this Yeti tumbler. So I will take my rectangle tool and just trace around the widest part of this tumbler. And I'm going to zoom in to make sure that I am getting all the right angles. Perfect. And then I'll also drag it to the bottom because I'm going to use this as my guide, but then I'll also convert it into my shape. So I'm going to turn on my rulers or show rulers, and I'm going to drag to the center of this box. Now, if I click, I can see my ruler is right in the middle, and that's going to be helpful when we go to the 3D and materials tools to revolve the shape. Now I'll grab my scissors tool and click on the center point on this outline. I'm just going to snip right there because we only need half of this rectangle shape. And from here, I will start making my outline. I'm going to curve in at the top just slightly and then add anchor points as I go along for each of these curves, each of these indents, and smoothing them along the way too. All right, I can drag in that shape right there. So I want the bottom of my cup to be flat, so I'm not going to imitate this curve, but I will just curve in the base of it slightly. And I'll also grab the yellow color from this cup. That's a good shade. And I'll move on to the top. So same thing, I'll take my rectangle tool and I'll meet the top of this Yeti tumbler. I'll make that gray so that I know that this is part of the metal lid. And I'll grab my um, scissors tool and snip on that side because we don't need that center line. And again, curving this in, looks like it's curved more than I thought. And then kind of same with this. I think I'm going to go back because these two pieces are connected. So I'm actually going to undo this curve. Now that's more realistic because these two pieces do match up. So don't be afraid to go change things later. It doesn't have to be perfect right away. So now that I have these pieces, I can come to 3D and materials and click revolve. There is the bottom piece. I'll click on just the silver and click revolve again. So I need to make sure that this isn't a solid piece. So what I'll do is I'll just delete that top anchor. And you can see there that it creates an opening in the top. And since this is a solid, there's no glass or anything, I don't need to go create an inset. I'll just work with a stroke here and make my shape that way. Similarly, for this top piece, we want it to be hollow, right? So we have to get a little creative and what I'll do is I'll click and create another anchor point right here because one section of this has to span from the center point to the width. That's how you create the width of the shape because otherwise, if we move both of these in, it just creates a really small little piece. So instead what I do is I'll keep this part wide and I will take these two pieces and then bring them down really far to basically nothing. And then I will also line these up so that there's no beveling. You can even take both of these anchor points, go to your align panel here and click center so that they're aligned. And then if that's not quite enough, um, I can also come in here and just bevel it slightly so that it doesn't look so harsh. And that's going to give you the illusion that there's an inside while also letting you create this metal piece outside. Now, if you need it to be hollow and you need it to 
show liquid or you're showing the inside, what I would do is instead combine these two pieces and then I would create the yellow piece as a graphic and apply that on top of the metal. However, I think this will work better and be able to make a convincing piece with the lid attached and the straw without having to mess with graphics. Because sometimes when the graphics are angled, it can make the back a little strange. Anyways, if you've placed a graphic on an image in Adobe Dimension, you can see the hang up. So I like to create just a solid object and then place graphics like a logo, etc., on my pieces. Now it's time to create the lid. I don't have an overhead view to just trace exactly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this shape here and I'm just going to delete this 3D and materials panel. But I want this, the center point, so clicking my circle tool, I'm going to click, hold option and shift, and drag it to the outside line of that lip. And that'll make sure that I'm making a lid that will line up with the metal piece that we created over here. And then I'll want to create a hole for the straw as well. So I'm going to kind of just guess and eyeball it. It won't be exact, but I'm okay with that. I'm going to align those two and keep a copy of this one for the straw for later. And I'll actually go ahead and just shrink it down a little from that and add that outline. I think I'll just do 1.5 for the stroke for the straw. But bringing that in a little bit, um, Going back to the lid, I'm going to go to select those two shapes and then minus front. So it gives us that hole. And then the straw, I will make sure that it's going to sit inside of that hole, which it will. All right, so I'm going to put that to the side, put that to the side, and then drag to make another layer. This, part, this time I'm going to create the lip that goes above. So I don't need that circle. I'm going to delete that. I'm duplicating that shape. What I do need to create is the lip. So I'm gonna make sure that these are aligned. Go back to my Pathfinder and come in maybe even a little bit more and then subtract. And then I also wanna create this shape here, this tab that helps you open the lid. So I will fake that too, cause I don't have an exact reference to trace over. So I will just take these Round those in, move these to the side a bit. Cool, cool. And then I'm gonna join these, grab these two anchor points and I will curve those so it looks like one molded piece together. Now it's time to go to their 3D and materials and click extrude. And for the depth, I will choose 0.1 for the Yeti, the top inset part, for this tab, I will choose a depth of 0.2. Yeah, 0.2 looks great. And then for the straw, I'm also going to choose extrude and choose a depth. Again, I'm just eyeballing it here. I can always change this later if it's not long enough, but I think this length of a straw, let me try 6.3. I think that will give us the straw that we need. So I'll place that over there because I do want to add a little bit of beveling, just fancy it up a little bit here. So I'll come to bevel, I'll click on this uh, shape with the tab and then click bevel. And then I'm going to go to this round panel. And I'm gonna just make it so subtle, but it'll make it look more realistic once we take it into our Adobe Dimension software. And I can even bevel both sides, which I love in the new Adobe 2023 Illustrator update. I will click bevel both sides because I think that it just gives it a realistic look. And then the other little piece that I will need is the Yeti logo. I have the Yeti logo here and I'm gonna bring this in. I just have the PNG though, so I have to do a little bit of tweaking. And it looks like in this reference that we don't have the registered trademark. Um, so that's fine, we'll edit that. We'll bring in our PNG, click on image trace. 
Um, if you're not familiar with Image Trace, you can open up this panel by clicking on this menu and adjust some different settings. So if you needed it to be color, there are some presets here. Um, and then in the advanced, you can tweak it. This one was a simple block letters and it came through really nice on the first try. I love when that happens. So I'm gonna click expand and that will create the vector shapes and paths for this element. So just deleting all of the white so that I have just the letters, 3D and materials, extrude, I'll choose a depth of 0.1. We'll make this silver as well. So now I have those raised letters that will go on the top of the cup. And later on, I'll add this Yeti logo as a graphic. Okay, now it's time to export all of our selections. So I'm going to open up our 3D and materials menu again and scroll to the bottom because a part of 2023's update is that you can now export your 3D object from inside of this panel. So if I just click on each piece individually and then click export 3D object, it will add each one to the asset export panel. So I'm just clicking on all of these and I'm going to label them and then I will highlight all of those. The only file type that we need is this OBJ file type. So once I have all of them selected and OBJ selected, then I will click export down here and save those out. All right, and that concludes part one of how to create the 3D objects using Adobe Illustrator. Next, I'll show you in Adobe Dimension how to assemble all of those pieces and apply the materials that create a really convincing, lifelike 3D mock-up for your graphics and for your packaging designs.